Look there. It did the baby. You're not, you can't come. Niggy. You're not did the baby. But you're not coming. You're not coming. Trash man. Hi, handsome. Oh no, we noticed the GoPro. Oh, goodness, what is that? Yeah, he boop. Oh, you little punk. Nice hairdo. What's that? A snack for later? <laughs> You're the cutest. You're the cutest little baby. Hi, Abby. Sweet mama. Nikki, why are you booping me? Okay, none of you are who I want. Strikey, oh you look so handsome. Boo. <laughs> Hi Strikey. Oh that's a handsome boy. Hi Palomato. You're actually pretty clean. What's going on? Are you unwell? It's like a quarter as much mud as usual. Wooly! So fuzzy. That was just so fuzzy. Look at how small your face is. It's so small. It's so cute. Okay. Hello, everybody over here. Hi, Lily. Oh, hello, Sally. Hello. Apollo. Finally. Hey, the horse we want. Mr. Maverick. Ta-da! Boo still thinks she, she's the horse I want. <laughs> All right, let's go, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, Boo. It's still, you're still too young. It's still only been a few. You sillies. All right, go on, him. Get off the ice. There we go. Okay, so especially in the winter, I like to use this. It's actually a snap-on shop vac that I got at Costco for under $100 anyway, much cheaper than a horse vacuum. And I just have it blowing out, so it blows the dust out of the coat. And yes, some of it resettles, but you're blowing it out from deep in the coat and it resettles on the surface. So when you go over with a dandy brush, it just flicks it all away. It gets the horse a lot cleaner. Maverick isn't really necessarily dirty because he's wearing a blanket, but he does accumulate a lot of scurf and dander. And that's what we're trying to get out of his coat to bring back a little bit of shine. 
I only showed me blowing his coat out and not grooming him, but I did in fact groom him. I was running a little low on GoPro battery. And I bet you didn't know from looking at him when we brought him in, but Maverick does in fact have four white socks underneath the copious amounts of mud. So here I'm just using warm water to wet his legs and get him cleaned up because I don't want to put his tendon boots over crusty mud and it would take a long time to try to get that off just with regular grooming. Here I put a little bit of shampoo on my sponge and scrub brush. The shampoo I use now and pretty much exclusively but I'm not sponsored by is Lucky Braids brand shampoo. It's antibacterial, antifungal, moisturizing, it's an all-in-one care. It um, takes care of that grime that they sometimes get on the front of the cannon bones, which is actually fungal infection. And it is just really awesome stuff. It's very brightening and it keeps the hair moisturized and healthy, so it helps it repel stains better even when you're not washing them. And there I just rinsed out my brush and now I'm rinsing off his legs. Yeah. No, you're not going for snacks. We're going for work. And here I'm just um, showing you guys a few steps of resetting his horseshoes. Uh, I do do it myself. I've been trimming horses for a long time and now doing composite shoes for uh, a bit over a year. Um, I really love the composite shoes. I'm going to put a link down in the description for anyone curious. They did a big case study and then a biomechanics study on it and the reason I have the composite shoes instead of just being barefoot, which I've pretty much had most of my horses barefoot for a long time, is because the extension of the heel on the back and the flexible shoe helps absorb impact and helps keep the strain off the suspensory by changing the fulcrum point of the foot, bringing the break over back, and bringing that heel extension back for extra support. The video is really interesting. They talk quite a bit about one specific horse. Um, but there's a lot of good general information and studies they do on the physics and biomechanics and I really would suggest giving it a look because it's very interesting stuff and I don't think I'll ever jump one of my horses big and I mean like three six and up um, consistently again without probably this type of protection. The brand of shoe I'm using here is a Duplo shoe. My current favorite, I've tried the Easy Shoe Flex. Um, and I'm not a fan of those for a few reasons. If you guys want a review done on them, I'd be happy to do that. Let me know in the comments below. I know a lot of people still use steel horseshoes. Uh, I do not shoe my horses in steel. I was mainly looking for the composite horseshoes because I wanted something I could stud up for jumping bigger on the grass. But now there's a bunch of controversy on tendon strains with the studs on the grass. So I've got a lot of research to do before we get there, but it's okay because most of the show venues I go to are on the GGT footing and not in the sand arenas yet until I get to the much bigger stuff. So we got some time to figure that out. So here I'm just showing the trimming of the foot. I didn't show any of the rasping. Again, I was running low on GoPro battery. I only had one when I first got this for Christmas, but I've since ordered two more, so now I have three total and it won't be such a problem. I just know other YouTubers have done videos of farriers coming to put their shoes on and I thought some people might find it interesting. The application of the shoe is pretty much identical to a standard steel shoe. The prep is a little different but of course these shoes are being reset so you didn't see any of the prep. You just basically have to um, shave off any of the excess material using either um, a jigsaw or belt sander or some such item. And I know a lot of people who are into barefoot are against putting 
nail holes in the wall, but um, I do only do probably three and two or three and three. So to me, five or six little nail holes in a shoe for the benefit that the shoes give is well worth it. And it is of course also possible to do these shoes in a glue on form, but I find the glue to be very messy and a serious pain in the butt. So unless there's some like really good reason why one of my horses would not be able to hold nails in their hoof wall, probably won't be doing too much gluing. Hold up. Watch out for purse. So here, as you notice, he's wearing a different blanket than the one I just put on him in the barn. These were actually him hauling to two separate lessons. I ran out of GoPro video at the end of the first day filming, or this is the first day, and I had it on the second day, whatever the case is. Uh, oopsie. But I wanted to do this prepping for the lesson and doing the lessons all in one video, but this is already getting a little long. And I think I'm going to do his improvement over his last three lessons because it's quite substantial. So that will be the next video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I actually just lied to you. The next video, I think I'm going to do my DIY mane and tail conditioner and detangler. That's my favorite. And I'm going to announce the giveaway winner in that video. So that'll be this weekend. Today is Friday. I'm voicing over on the same day I'm uploading. So stay tuned tomorrow for the con co or mane and tail conditioner. DIY plus the winner of the giveaway. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you soon.